Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heritage Language Syntax. As you know, uh, this was supposed to happen in March. Then we decided to move it to August because we thought back then that by August, maybe the COVID crisis is uh, resolved and then we need rooms. Then in August, we saw that the things were not uh, going to change so much. So we decided to move it to October. So here we are. Heritage language, uh, syntax. Syntax because that's the part which is less studied in heritage uh, language linguistics. As you know very well, heritage linguistics um, is not new. It just had other names. And in Europe, it is also studied in many different places under the name of minority linguistics or um, heritage varieties, etc. But heritage, this, this terminology, let's say, has been, I think, introduced uh, in America, and this is most widely used. An interesting uh, point of reflection is that the tradition and the study of minority languages and dialects, at least in Europe, is very long, but for decades it has been um, focusing on, it has focused on languages. So actually it had a structure of focus. It, it is about you know, how the dialect or the language uh, evolved and who, wha, how it is used, etc. There was a big description. There's been a description, there was a big, a, sorry, a description usually of the grammar of these varieties. And there was a description of the social linguistics, which was always very prominent. In the last years, there has been a switch from the uh, structural social linguistic observation point to a more cognitive uh, speaker oriented observation point. And this means that most of the times we, we have uh, contributions that have to do with the still with the mental grammar of the speaker, but mainly about that, that mainly uh, care about the speaker's background, the input, the, the start, uh, the, the, the length of exposure, the level of uh, mastery of the languages involved, etc. So everything is more cognitive and speaker oriented than it used to be. It was, so it started to be community oriented. It was for many, many, many years community oriented. Now it is really more speaker oriented. And therefore there are much more, there are many more studies in psycholinguistics targeting heritage language linguistics. This is a welcome uh, change because there has been a lot produced but we kind of forgot a little bit and we left a structure like pure structural considerations a bit behind. This heritage language syntax attempts to, to reconcile the two, so to bring structure back in the picture, to have a look at actually grammars in contact and also, and also, also including uh, considerations about the social linguistics and the speaker, the speaker uh, themselves. So, um, in the beginning, we formulated some questions that were more or less some indications. Some the, the, the key question was optionality, how you resolve optionality. It seems that these varieties contain much more feature, much more optionality than standard varieties. Some talks are about that, some other talks are not. What we want, what we aim here is to listen to the contribution of uh, all experts and people working on these minor minority and heritage languages in the world. We have a very wide um, set of speakers from uh, on, on many different languages. Um, on Friday, we're gonna close this uh, event with a round table at 3 p.m. Uh, Central European Standard Time. You can follow it on, on, on YouTube or if you want, you can ask us for the Zoom link. And we hope to set a, a platform where people who work especially on syntax of these minorities can come together and talk. For now, welcome. Enjoy all the beautiful videos and talks that I've already uh, a little bit looked at and hopefully see you soon for the Heritage Language Syntax 2 maybe in person. Enjoy.